Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I did a video about a week ago mentioning how smart refrigerators are often breaking down. They're too smart for their own good. And of course, what we're talking about is that, that by making them smart, they're also becoming more complicated. And so I can see on some levels what they're trying to accomplish with the smart refrigerators and so on. But sometimes the complications are put into things you wouldn't suspect. And that's what leads us to this story. A lot of people sent me this story. It's been widely reported, including in the Business Insider. A college is removing its vending machines after a student discovered they were using facial recognition technology. So you walk up the vending machine to get yourself a bag of M&Ms, and that thing is analyzing you. <laughs> I wonder what it's thinking. I bet it's talking about me behind my back. So Lauren Edmonds wrote this. We're talking about the University of Waterloo in Canada. They're going to remove a series of vending machines from campus after a student discovered an indication it was using facial recognition technology. These smart vending machines at the University of Waterloo first gained attention this month when a Reddit user shared a photo which purportedly showed an M&M brand vending machine with an error reading Invenda vending facial recognition dot app dot exe application error. <laughs> Look, you just put in your money and you get your candy. What's, what's this error now? The post drew speculation from some users and caught the attention of a University of Waterloo student whom the tech news website Ars Technica identified as a writer for the local student publication Math News. He had investigated the smart vending machines, discovering that they're provided by a vending service and manufactured by a company called Invenda, which is why that word popped up there, apparently. The Canadian publication CTV News reported that Mars which is the owner of M&M's, owns the vending machines. So yes, we've got robot vending machines from Mars. <laughs> that should be the headline of this, of this story. In response to the student publication's report, the director of technology services for Adaria Vending Machines told Math News that an individual person cannot be identified using the technology in the machines. So they're not trying to ID you in that sense, but they're still doing something, right? What's most important to understand is that the machines do not take or store any photos or images, and an individual person cannot be identified using the technology in the machines. The technology acts as a motion sensor that detects faces, so the machine knows when to activate the purchasing interface. It never takes or stores images of customers. The statement said the machines are fully GDPR compliant, referring to the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, which is all fine and dandy because, of course, we're not in Europe, neither are the Canadians. The regulation is part of the EU's privacy legislation that determines how corporations can collect citizens' data. At the University of Waterloo, the company manages last mile fulfillment services. That is that they restock and do the logistics for the snack vending machines. Adaria does not collect any data from its users, does not have any access to identify users of these M&M vending machines. The group told Math News that the technology did not store information on permanent memory and the machines were GDPR compliant. It does not engage in storage, communication, or transmission of any imagery or personally identifiable information. The software conducts local processing of digital image maps derived from the USB optical sensor in real time without storing such data on permanent memory mediums or transmitting it over the internet to the cloud. Math News reported that the company's FAQ list said that the only final data, namely presence of a person, estimated age, and estimated gender, <laughs> estimated gender, is collected without any association with an individual. The University of Waterloo told CTV that the school intends to remove the machines from campus. The university has asked these machines to be removed from campus as soon as possible. In the meantime, we've asked about the software to be disabled, said a rep for the university. Representatives for the university, as well as the others in the story, did not respond to Business Insider's request for further comment sent over the weekend ahead of publication. Facial recognition technology on college campuses has caused tension for students and staff members, with examples popping up globally. In May of 2018, a school in China began monitoring students in classrooms with facial recognition technology that scanned every 10 seconds. Two years later, a woman on TikTok claimed she failed a test after a test proctoring artificial intelligence system accused her of cheating. I remember a few of those stories popping up also. 
Tensions heightened in 2020 when students at dozens of U.S. universities protested facial recognition on college campuses, according to The Guardian. Education be, should be a safe place, but this technology hurts the most vulnerable people in society, a student at DePaul University told the outlet. So you might be asking, wait, what are they doing? Like, like in other words, does this sound like it makes any sense at all? And I believe it does on one level. What they say is they've got a machine sitting there, okay? And it's got smart stuff inside of it to control everything it does because everything does these days. I'm surprised these aren't smart glasses. And so as you approach the machine, it detects the presence of a person. A person has approached. A person is a potential customer. So it probably then fires up whatever it needs to fire up to to make a sale. And then I'm guessing... What it also does is it scans the person standing there who makes a sale and then tries to deduce from some basic metrics the demographic that that person fits into and then what do they buy because that information would be valuable to the vendor. So the vendor discovered that for whatever reason, 98% of our sales are being made by men and only 2% being made by women. They might go, oh, we have a problem then. We either got to get word out to the women that there's vending machines here, or we've got to put stuff in the vending machines that appeals to women. And in the old days, it used to be that a guy would just simply come by every couple weeks, look at the vending machine, and go, okay, this rack is empty, but that rack is full. I will refill the empty rack. Well, it turns out that now they can get even more information. But I do agree that people have the right to be paranoid about this because when you do walk up to it and it's analyzing you and they say they're not storing the information, not doing anything like that. Well, the facial recognition software probably I'm betting could be set to recognize repeat customers, for instance. Oh, we meet again. (laughs) You're the guy who likes the peanut M&Ms. Would you, would you like some today, my friend? And so there always is the concern And as we know, uh, all you got to do is get your toe in the door, keep that door open, and then kind of slip your foot in. Next thing you know, the knee pops through. And, and, you know, so I I, I agree that I can see this concern. I remember in the early days of the Internet, early, early days of the Internet, when somebody discovered that Coke machines were hooked up to the Internet and Coke machines could be tapped into remotely to find out what they still had in stock. And I remember, I'm talking, (laughs) this is a long time ago. I remember in the earliest days of the internet, people saying, hey, I found this site that we've we've hacked into, and you can check out what the inventory is in the local Coke machine on your campus. (laughs) And again, that's, I'm not sure how useful that would be to anybody except for the people who run the machine, But it was just an interesting example of the kinds of things how the internet would infiltrate every corner of your life, including in ways you wouldn't think. Now, I have no problem with Coke tracking their own machines to see what sells, but I do have a problem on some level with the machine analyzing you as you approach it. And then the question is, what is it analyzing you for and what are they going to do with that information? And I can see some people saying, Steve, I'm not even bothered by that. If that thing determines that I am a man roughly (laughs) 50 to 70 years old, and it just knows that, and the next time I walk up, it goes, oh, here's that old guy again, I'm not troubled by that. And and I wouldn't be troubled by it either if I knew for a fact that that would be the limit of what they would do. But we all know that that ain't the fact. And that ain't the limit, because if they can figure out some way to make a little bit more money by tweaking this formula, and for instance, I'll give you an example. What if somebody approached this company and said, hey, you've got a vending machine in a hallway that students walk up and down, right? Would you care to sell us the data that that vending machine gathers throughout the day? Because that'd be useful to my company. Would they really say, oh, no, we can't do that. That would be unethical. We'd be breaching the code of vending machine operators. (laughs) And so the sad part is that the data is always valuable to somebody. And that means somebody's probably willing to pay for it. And if someone's willing to pay for it, that means that bad things can happen. So the vending machines will be removed. 
Uh, I can't imagine this is the only place they were put. So that's another interesting question is, are these new high-tech, highfalutin, smart vending machines near you? But a college is removing its vending machines after a student discovered they were using facial recognition technology. And that's from Business Insider. And the funny part is, is that the vending machine apparently showed its error code and it gave itself away. So I wonder if that machine will be punished when it's brought back to where it came from. <laughs> Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication.